Today I'm going to show you how to do a typical cam timing on a full wheeler. This is a Raptor 660, so it's just a typical uh, four-stroke full wheeler engine or dirt bike engine that are exactly like this. So starting off, this is my 660 that I am rebuilding. So I have my cam out right now. I've already rebuilt this top end. I'm getting ready to put the cam in. So first things first, before I do anything, you should have some sort of little peephole that you can uh, rotate your crank and you can see where your position is on the crank down here. So once you take both of those out, you should have to line it up according to your manual. I don't know what yours may or may not say, but I have to line mine up with a little eye uh, with a little slit in the case. Once I do that, it's at top dead center. Obviously, since your ratio from your crank to your cam is a one to two ratio or two to one, whatever it is, that means that you know this obviously is going to turn one cycle. This is only this is going to turn two cycles for this to turn one. So no matter where it's at, you just have to make sure your bottom end is on top dead center. Once you have that set, that's when you need to go look at your manual to see where the marks are on your cam to it to be in time with your crank. For the marks on my four wheeler, I have two uh, punch marks on the cam gear that have to line up with the deck surface of this four wheeler. Both of them have to be perfectly level with this. Some of yours may have uh, like a different four wheeler I did a video on where there's a slit in the top of the valve cover where you have to line the cam up with it. This one's different, so check your manual. Just so no one gets confused about this four wheeler, I want to go ahead and show you how you tell which holes are the right ones. So according to the manual, it tells you to line up these two holes that are on top of the cam here. It says there's one here and there's one here. And then you have this small hole that they added in to the picture right there. That's what I got mixed up on along with this diagram down here. That's an imaginary hole. So I thought that that's what one of these holes are supposed to be whenever I first did this. So you've got these little punch holes on here. That's what I thought meant uh, one of them that goes up. Because there are another set of holes with one of those. That's what I thought where there's two oil gallery holes. But after uh, looking over my footage, that's a mistake that I made whenever I put this in there for the first time. So what you want to do is make sure you have this turned over and you have both dial pins for this four wheeler only. Just making that clear. Both the dial pins need to be uh, completely like 180 degrees from each other and sideways. And then that's when you'll have both of the holes lined up. Obviously, there's no holes lined up right now. And now they are. But a little dimple right there. So I got these two holes lined up. So this is where the cam is supposed to be once it's inside the engine. You have to have both of these little punch holes lined up with the deck surface. After cleaning off the tensioner along with the surface that this sits on and the valve cover, this is getting ready to uh, be prepped for sealer. So I got to put some like RTV black all over this surface here because I don't have the gasket for it. But also you want to make sure that this uh, tensioner actually works. So what you want to do is press down this button here, make sure it slides in. Along with if you really want to test it, stick the spring and the bolt back in here. And the, uh, the spring should push this out just a little bit. That's obviously how it sets the tension and pushes it against one of the guides which helps push the tension against the chain. First things first, you gotta take off these two little covers to be able to turn the crank and see where it's at top dead center. There's the little eye that you gotta line up. You gotta line it up with the slit inside the case. So once you get that lined up, you gotta make sure that you know your, can your chain did not fall down in. Mine's disconnected right now, down on the bottom, so I gotta sit there and wiggle it around and see if I can get it to catch. And then once I get that, uh, once I get that connected again, then I can go ahead and put the cam in. All right, so now it's time to install the cam. So I do already have this lubed up a little bit, but I'm gonna put more on after I get it in there. And also the manual states like, oh, put the cam in first, then put the uh, uh, gear on here. But I make I find it a lot easier to just slip this on in first and then adjust it after it's already in. So first things first is to get your chain out from this so i'm just gonna hold the chain out like this i try to put the cam down in there but the two dimple with the two holes facing upwards and the dimple right next to it so i've got a punch hole right here and a punch hole right here that's supposed to line up with that surface there so i'm gonna try to slide her down on in there being real careful with it It does take a lot of maneuverability to get it to slide down in there just right. And then once you get it down in there, you got to tip the cam upwards just a little bit. 
Now you want to double check where your punch holes are uh, just to see where they are once you first put them on here. So obviously I've got one tooth high on this side, but I've also may have turned the crank in the process. So what you want to do is make sure that you're at top dead center uh, using the eye down there. And if you are at top dead center and you're off like this, all you got to do is sit here and uh, open the cam up like this and then jiggle the chain around like that. You can just move it one tooth. Makes it so much easier than what the manual was stating. Something I didn't mention in, this, in the video is that sometimes you have a little bit of slack whenever you're like setting the tension on it or just even uh, messing with the chain that you have a little bit of uh, play with it. So whenever you're like trying to set it, you're like, oh, am I actually at top, am I actually at top dead center and that I have these punch holes lined up? Because sometimes it'll be off just a little bit or off just a little too high, no matter which way you move the tooth up or down, you're way too far off. Well, when you have a little bit of slack in it, you may be right with it. So the only way I can describe this is if you have a ruler. When I was actually setting mine, I had this one uh, that was towards the rear of the four-wheeler actually sitting down just a little bit and this one sitting up just a little bit. So whenever it was set, this one was down just a little bit, this one was up just a little bit, but I had enough leeway to move the cam chain that it actually made both of them level. No matter which way you set the tooth, this one's going to be too high or this one's going to be too high. So whenever you do it, if you can move it just a little bit and both of them line up, that's where you need to set the tension. You don't need to set it one tooth before and then try to set the tension because that will set it at a time. So if you can move your uh, cam wheel, that's where you need to set it. If you can move it uh, completely level, that's when you need to set the tension and double check it. Because once you put the tensioner in and then move it through and then you try to double check it, both of those holes still should be able to line up. There's top dead center. And both of my punch marks, it's kind of hard to see them a little bit. But I've got that one right there, and I've got this other one here lined up right with the deck surface, which is where it's supposed to be, along with checking up top both of these little holes and then the little dimple. So this is perfectly in time. So what you want to do now is install your cam tensioner which goes right here. So what you want to do is make sure you put some sealer on this or the cam tensioner one of the two. Once you stick that in there, you want to t put the two Allens in first, tighten those down, and then put the uh, spring and then the bolt through and then torque it down so it sets the tension. The tension is probably going to move the chain just a little bit. After you set the tension, what you want to do is uh, double check with this to make sure it's still at top dead center and both of those holes still line up. With that tensioner bolt, Right here, torque down to 16 foot-pounds. Everything is now nice and tight, or at least should be, which it is. And my punch holes did not move, which is good. Also, the eye mark hasn't moved either, even though you can't see that. All right, attempt number two with the spark plug actually uh, attached. Well, it runs, thank God. So far, you know, so far it's just been a pain trying to get this thing back together, but as long as it runs, it's good to me. And, you know, it's been full of oil, hasn't leaked yet, but I haven't been running that much, so I'm honestly wanting the top end uh, gasket maker to dry first before anything, because I don't want it to leak. That's why I didn't want to run it that long. And plus the throttle, you know, this is the first time I'm running with new carburetors, so I just literally had it turned all the way out and turned like maybe two in. So I expected it to like die whenever I let off the choke, which is what it did. But so far, so good. So I'll go ahead and uh, finish the video series by showing you how to put the plastics back on and stuff like that. But for now, please subscribe.